ready now to create the back of the chair, starting from the rear leg. I'm going to open up my reference image again and take a close look at it. You'll notice, of course, that the chair leg and back have this nice bend, this arc to it. Additionally, if you look closely, you'll see that it's tapered. The wood is thicker here in the center and thinner at the ends. If you look even more closely, you'll notice that it's only tapered in one direction. In other words, the width in this direction here is constant. Okay, but the width from this other angle here is variable. So we only need to taper in one dimension in this case. So we know we're going to have to taper the object in one dimension and also bend it. Okay, so we'll start from a box once again. I'll go around, tumble around to the back here, orbit to the back, and I will go ahead and create, for my create panel, another box. And again, the exact size doesn't really matter at this point, at first creation time, because I can go ahead and just type in a value. It was 1.5 inches, 1.5, and pressing tab. The height, maybe we should go back to our reference and figure out what that height should be. So I'm going to press my Alt tab and go back to the manufacturer's specifications and take a look. The height is 33 and a half inches total. Well, I'm going to bend the box, so that's actually going to affect the height. So I think I'll need to make this a little bit larger than that to account for the bend. So let's just give it an even 34 inches. Press return. Okay, then I can go to my top view. I can right click and exit out of box creation mode, back out, and roughly position the box. I don't know exactly where this is going to go, but somewhere around here is probably about right. It needs to be rotated as well. So I can grab my rotate tool, and in the top view, I can just click on the yellow circle and rotate that. And you can look down at the bottom of the screen and see the rotation angle, and you can also see it on the rotate gizmo itself. So I can set that to somewhere around 45 degrees. I might as well just go down to the Z rotation and type in exactly 45. Get in a little bit closer to that and, and position it. Okay. That's more like it. Orbit around in the perspective view once again and get a better look. Cool, so far so good. So I need to create more segments here because we need to resolve better curvature. Looking at our reference once again, you'll see we've got that nice bend to it and we got the taper. So we don't have enough information here to do that. If I tried to bend this now, it would just make an angle bracket. I need to have more segmentation in order to give the illusion of curvature. So I'll go into the modify panel for this new object and increase the number of height segments. How much? Well, that's the ultimate question that we need to figure out. We want to add just enough height segments so that we'll be able to resolve that curve and it'll look nice, but not so much that we're going to bog down the computer. So where's the sweet spot? I'm going to say maybe 16 segments. It's probably about right. We could probably bring it down from there, but you can always change it later at this point because it's still a procedural model. Cool, all right, so the next step then is my taper. Okay, so we're gonna go and into the modifier list and we'll just do it alphabetically. We'll go down to T for taper. There we go, and similarly to the other leg, we're gonna change its gizmo position. So I'll open up its gizmo sub-object mode and I can move that around. Basically, I wanna center it. So let's go out in the left view and figure out where the center of this taper effect wants to be. Probably right around the center of the seat, or, or perhaps down a little bit lower. Going back to the reference and just, just checking, I, I think it's actually going to be at the top of the seat, pretty much bisecting, splitting in half. Okay, so that's the position for the taper effect. Now let's adjust the amount so we can see the effect, and you can see we look in the perspective view, it's tapering with that as the center of the operation. So I'm going to make this a little bit more exaggerated so we can see the effect happening here. Okay, I'm going to hit Alt W and 
get a nice big screen so we can really see this. All right, now, what we want to do is we want to have it tapered down uh, to a smaller point uh, at the bottom and also at the top. And we can affect that by enabling the symmetry switch in the taper modifier. Okay, now when we adjust the amount, you'll see, ah, excellent, it's actually tapering top and bottom. But remember that I said that we only want to taper in one dimension, not two. So when we look from the side here, basically we want to see it uh, narrower at the top and bottom and thicker. But if we look from the front of this piece, we want this to be constant. We want the width to be constant in this direction. Okay, so all I have to do is choose a different effect down here. Do I want to uh, taper it in the x-axis or the y-axis or both? And the default is to do both. So if you look at this from an angle and try out these different options, we can see which is right. Okay, so X isn't right, but what about Y? I think that's what we want. We want it to look constant from this direction. And we want it to be uh, thicker and thinner in the other direction. All right, and then I'll just adjust the amount a little bit. It doesn't need to be quite so extreme. We can make that a little bit more subtle. Now we're going to add a bend modifier. We can exit out of gizmo sub object and we'll add another modifier. This is also a parametric deformer. So we can add it from the alphabetical list here as well. Here it is, bend. Go ahead and add that. Now I've got a modifier stack with a primitive at the bottom and then a taper and then a bend. Now of course if I had added the bend below the taper we'd get a different result. All right, so I'll tumble around, orbit around again. Let's try playing with the bend angle. Okay, you can see that it is bending, and it's bending nicely because we have enough segmentation there, but it's certainly not bending in the direction that we want. All right, so we can set this angle to something, just any non-zero value, and then play around with the direction and see what that does. So it's bending in different directions. Aha, okay. So as I bring this all the way around here, you see that's really the direction that we want to be bending in. So that looks like it's going to be negative 90 degrees. So I'll type in negative 90, press enter, and then play with that angle again. Cool. And as I think you can probably predict, I want to move the bend gizmo upward so that it'll bend from the center here. Let's look at the reference once again. So in fact, actually, the, the bend, yeah, it'll probably be just right around in the center, will be the center of the bend operation. So I'll go into the bend modifier, open up its sub-object modes, and click gizmo. And then once again, I can move this. I'm being careful to only move it in the z-axis, moving it up and down only. I don't want to move it side to side or in any other direction, because it's not going to give me a desirable outcome. So I'm being sure to only move up in z. I can look at it from the side or front view and check my work. Alt W. Try to figure out if I'm anywhere in the ballpark. So it looks like I need to move the object a little bit closer because it's not quite joining up there. So I'll make a final adjustment to my bend. Maybe I'll move it right in the center there. That'll make it easier to have it join up to these two pieces. Okay. And what I want to do is I want to move the object in slightly so that we don't have this gap here. Get in really close on that so you can see the gap. Uh, we certainly don't want to see that. 